Consider the circuit that's shown on the board. We have a battery attached to a resistor. We know that conventional current will flow from the positive terminal through the resistor to the negative terminal. Now keep in mind, electron flow is in the opposite direction. But let's say if we want to reverse the polarity across the load resistor. How can we do that without actually reversing the polarity of the battery? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about two elements that can briefly reverse the polarity of a DC signal. These are capacitors and inductors. And we're going to talk about how it works. So first, let's redraw a new circuit. So what we're going to need is a battery, a momentary push button, a resistor, a capacitor, and another, let's call that a load resistor. And we'll call this C1. And this is going to be R1 and RL. So when we momentarily close the push button, current is going to flow from the battery. It's also going to flow through R1 and back to the negative terminal. At the same time, there's going to be current flowing towards C1 and also away from C1 as C1 charges itself from the battery's energy. And it's going to be flowing through the load resistor in this direction. So the top part of the load resistor will be positive and the bottom part will be negative. So when the switch is closed, C1 is being charged by the battery. Now let's see what happens when the switch is open. So once we open the switch, current will no longer be able to flow from the battery. So that switch is off. The capacitor has now been charged by the battery, so it has a voltage across it. Once the switch is open, the capacitor begins to discharge through R1, and that current will flow through the load resistor. Now let's focus on the load resistor because the direction of the current has reversed. And this portion of the load resistor, the bottom part is now positive and the top part is negative. And it is this reversal of current that we're interested in. So here is an experiment that will demonstrate this phenomena. R1 is a 5 kilo ohm resistor. R2 is a 1 kilo ohm resistor to limit the amount of current flowing through the LEDs so that the battery doesn't burn them out. And C1 is a 1000 microfarad 16 volt capacitor. So when the switch is closed, current is going to flow from the battery, charging C1, and the green LED will be in forward bias mode, so it's going to be on, whereas the red LED, it's in reverse bias mode, so it's off. So when the switch is closed, the green LED will stay on. It's going to stay on until C1 has been fully charged by the battery. The battery that I'm using is a 6 volt battery. Now, when the switch is open, this circuit is off. So we know that C1 is now going to be in discharge mode. It's going to discharge through R1. That current is going to flow through R2. And this time, the red LED will be active. So that's going to be on. The green LED is in reverse bias mode, so that's going to be off. And the current will flow back to the capacitor. So in this way, the capacitor can be used to change the direction of the current while it's discharging um, after being charged by a battery. So this is a picture of the circuit that I'm about to test. This is R1, the 5 kilo ohm resistor. This is R2, the 1 kilo ohm resistor. And here we have two LEDs connected in parallel to each other, but the cathode and the anode are in reverse with respect to each other. And this is the 1000 microfarad capacitor. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the battery and I'm going to disconnect it on and off. So I'm going to connect it, disconnect it, connect it, disconnect it, and vice versa. And so just watch what happens with the two LEDs.
Thus, as was evident in the last demonstration, it is possible to reverse the direction of a current using a capacitor and two resistors. And we can do this by taking advantage of the charging and discharging capabilities of a capacitor. That's how we can use it to reverse the direction of a current. Now, we, we can also do the same thing with an inductor. And here's a circuit that's going to show how we can do that. So once we close the switch, current from the battery is going to flow through R1, and some current will flow through the inductor. The polarity across the inductor will be as follows. Now, as the current flowing in the inductor increases, a magnetic field will be created by the inductor. And as the current increases, the strength of the magnetic field increases. It expands. Now, what's going to happen when the switch is open? So after changing the switch from the closed position, and now it's in the open position, the battery will no longer be able to deliver current in the circuit. Now, what the inductor is going to try to do is it's going to try to maintain the current that was flowing in it. And the current was flowing in this direction. So while the current is decreasing, the magnetic field that is around the inductor will begin to collapse. The energy that was captured by the inductor when the magnetic field expanded, that energy is now being released back into the circuit as the magnetic field collapses. When the magnetic field collapses, the polarity is going to reverse. This is the polarity across the inductor. And so current is going to flow from the positive terminal of the inductor through R1 back to the negative terminal of the inductor until the inductor releases all of its stored energy. Now, what we want to pay attention to is the direction of the current through R1. When the switch is open and as the inductor is generating current due to the collapse in magnetic field, the polarity across the resistor is as follows. It's positive at the bottom, negative at the top. So current is flowing up through R1. When the switch was closed, and we had this circuit, current was flowing from the positive terminal of the battery through R1 in that direction. So the polarity across R1 is that. It's positive at the top, negative at the bottom. But now, when the inductor is releasing its stored energy, the polarity reverses. Thus, the capacitor and the inductor can both be used to change the direction of the current. When these two elements are absorbing energy from the circuit, the current is flowing in one direction. And when they release energy back into the circuit, the current can reverse and flow in the other direction. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to use a transformer instead of an inductor. And a transformer is basically the same as an inductor, but you have two separate coils. So this is the circuit that I'm going to use. So here we have a switch, a resistor, which is going to be parallel to a transformer. Now across the transformer, I'm going to have my two light emitting diodes, a green and a red LED. And I'm going to use a 5 kilo ohm resistor for R1. So when the switch is closed, current is going to flow through the transformer and through R1. So the transformer is absorbing energy as the current flowing through it increases. And thus, as that current increases, the magnetic field inside the coil of that wire expands. Now, as the magnetic field expands, it's going to affect the voltage induced on the secondary coil. So one side is going to be positive and the other side is going to be negative. And so current is going to flow from this side, and it's going to activate the green LED, 
and then it's going to go back to the negative side. So that's what's happening when the current is increasing in the original circuit. One of the LEDs will light up. So this is going to happen temporarily. The green LED will not stay on. So when the current flow in any inductor increases, the green LED will be on. But if you keep the switch closed, eventually, the current is going to reach its maximum. So here the green LED is on, here it's off. Because when the current is constant, the magnetic field is no longer expanding. It reached its maximum value, and there's not going to be any induced voltage in the secondary coil. So just keep that in mind. The only way you can induce a voltage in the secondary coil is if the magnetic field is changing, which means there has to be a change in current to create a change in magnetic field. So what you need to understand is that the green LED will be on for a short period of time while the current is increasing. So as current flows through the transformer, this is going to be positive and this is going to be negative. But now let's see what happens when we open the circuit or we open the switch. In this case, the current flowing in this area will decrease. And as the current decreases, the magnetic field will decrease as well. So it's collapsing. The stored energy that was captured by the inductor when the switch was closed, that energy is now being released back into the circuit due to the collapse in magnetic field. So as was mentioned before, the polarity will reverse. The inductor will try to maintain the current. Now, the polarity will also be reversed on the other transformer. When the magnetic field was expanding, the polarity was as follows. Now that the magnetic field is collapsing, the polarity is going to reverse. So this is going to be positive, and this is going to be negative. So current is now going to flow in the other direction. Thus, the red LED will now be on, and the green LED will be off. And this will only happen for a very short period of time. Because once the energy of this inductor has been released back into the circuit, it's not going to have any more energy. The magnetic field will be collapsed completely back to zero, and so this is going to be off. Here is a pic of the circuit with the transformer, and here is the 5 kilo ohm resistor. I'm using the secondary coils of a transformer that is designed to convert 120 volts AC into 12 volts AC. And this is the primary coil, which should be going to a 120 volt outlet. So in this way, it's being used as a step up transformer. And then here are the two LEDs connected in parallel to each other. So let's see what happens when I turn the circuit on and off repeatedly. Thus, as you can see, it is possible to use an inductor or even a transformer to reverse the direction of a current. Now, instead of turning the switch on and off, you could connect it to a pulse generator, such as the 555 timer circuit, and you can take that DC input and convert it into an alternating AC output. Now, you may not get a, a nice pure sine wave, but nevertheless, you can get that constant reversal of current when the capacitor charges or discharges. And the same is true for the inductor.